When this most beautiful planet formed 4.5 billion years ago, life soon proliferated in the oceans. And most people don't realize that fungi were the first organisms that came onto land. 1.3 billion years ago, fungi inherited the Earth. We are totally dependent upon fungal mats called mycelium that infuse all the soils of all land masses on Earth. More than 90% of the species of mushroom forming fungi out in nature, we don't even know. Fungi are engaging us all the time. up Humphrey Channel okay. and we're going to come into about this area here. Most people may not realize that more than 60 percent of our pharmaceuticals are still based on natural origins. There's a potential. Well, this is a continuation of a lifelong journey for the search for agaricon. Agaricon is this exceedingly rare mushroom growing exclusively in the old growth forest, more typically on Douglas firs around here. It's called Fomitopsis officinalis. It has very significant antiviral effects and antibacterial effects against tuberculosis, staphylococcus, and E. coli. There are very few medicines that are dually active, antivirally and antibacterially. So if we can find something that can provide a host defensive resistance, first against the virus and secondarily against the ensuing bacterial infection, it could be a significant medical yeah. discovery. So just like every organism, you know, every microbe. Two top researchers from the University of Illinois Tuberculosis Research Center in Chicago have flown out, and the activity has been significant enough to get their interest. We're interested, of course, in finding new cures for tuberculosis. That's the sole focus of our institute. We've been uh, testing this in the laboratory, and we've had some uh, very encouraging early results. There it is, a Garricon. And it's unusual to find people who work with these organisms very closely or have a very deep understanding of them and a passion about them. Good job. Paul is, is such a person. We are finding more Garricon than I've ever found in my life in this short voyage. To help us to do the project correctly, it really helps to be out here and to understand these organisms and where they live and, and what is special about them. There's a total shamanic power spot here. There's no oral or written histories on pictographs. Nobody knows how old these drawings are or what they mean anymore. But uh, one of the figures resembles very uh, closely what Paul describes as Mushroom Man. And uh, you may want to talk to him more about that. I'm sure he'll be happy to tell you something. In 1894, Charles Edenshaw recorded the legend of Fungus Man and the origination myth of women. And these were etched out in the Haida Gwaii, also known as the Queen Charlotte Islands. And Fungus Man is, is speculated to be Fomitops officinalis. And the reason why we say that is the Haida Gwaii shaman graves had this fungus carved in the shape of figurines, bears, beavers, placed upon the shaman's grave to help them go into the afterworld. And how interesting that Fomitops officinalis would be growing right where these pictographs are. And I suggest the hypothesis that Fomitops officinalis was here first. And the pictographs are here because of this, because shamanistically, Places and objects become important spiritually because of a confluence of multiple characteristics, not because of one thing. A power spot is just not a power spot because of a location. It's because of a synergy of multiple characteristics that make it super special. You know, I work with several people who look for sources of drugs from fungi, but they take a much more kind of um, sterile laboratory approach. And the other approach is, okay, no, I'm gonna look for something that I think is very special. Anybody have a pair of binoculars with them? And let's make an effort on this one species. And so, last time we found eagle down underneath this tree. It's like, whoa. 
And this is, you know, the, the way I see Paul's approach. And, and to me as a scientist, it's also kind of, kind of hard to put that much faith in, in one avenue. But um, I feel better doing this with someone like Paul, who's worked around these organisms for, for his whole life. And so if he has an intuitive feeling that this one is really special, um, then, you know, I'm going with him on this. I'm really happy with how stable this is. The question is how, how much I can reach. I'm going to try to look for this. See this little cleft right here? I could take that section out. And it's touching the wood, so it's likely to be alive right there. Cutting horizontal. This one's really unusual because it is white, but there's a, a living yeah, membrane like underneath. And ladder. from that living membrane, I hope to put a little piece of tissue in these tubes. We'll leave the conch there in the wild. And by getting a little piece of tissue, I can take it back to the laboratory and then we can grow it out. Okay, here you go. Oh. Oh. Fantastic. Go team, that's all we need. Who knows, maybe this is a strain that will cure tuberculosis, right? This could be, maybe the millions of lives are really at this crossroads. I always tell my students that there's very few things that are worthwhile that will really get you to the result you're looking for that are easy, you know, that are just going to drop in your lap. So you go out and you, and you make an effort, and, um, and this is usually what will bring you something worthwhile. It's a general lesson of life, I guess. Woohoo! What a team!